you know, I, I really, I love my church. You know, I love, I love the people here. You know, I, we, uh, um, I missed you guys. We were, we were in Miami and door opened up for us to go minister over there. And, and it was great. And they, they treated us real good. But, you know, I'm, I'm a pastor. So I just, I like being home. <laughs> I, like, I like being with my people. I like uh, preaching at my church. Don't get me wrong. If the Lord says go here, I'll, I'll go. But I just love you guys. And I miss y'all. And I, I, I love being here. You know, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to keep going because, it, uh, but I, I really do. It's with all my heart. You know, it's, I know that God has called me to pastor because even, you know, with my own family, I like being with my family and, and I love being with y'all. So uh, it really is a blessing to be back. And um, I just want you guys to be, get ready. I mean, there's people that are going to come from, from other places to come and learn from you, to see what God is doing here because, you know, our church is not, it's not common. It's not like the church down the street. When people come in here, they feel love. They feel the presence. You know, we have people that even if they come in for the first time, that they, they feel like they know us, you know, because of, that's the genuineness of, of, uh, of your hearts. So I, I really, I just applaud you. I, I, I talk about you wherever I go. And, um, you know, I'm very, I'm very blessed and proud to be pastor of, a, of an amazing, amazing church. So... I love you guys. Um, I am, um, I just really, I mean, I don't know, it's like my heart has really been, when I've just been studying and preparing for the meaning of Christmas, it's really, I, I've been in tears a lot just because just the thought of the way that, you know, Christmas has gotten a different rap and usually in Christmas time people get stressed out, they get anxiety, they get lonely, they get this, they get that. But that's not the meaning of Christmas. The meaning of Christmas was the total opposite. You know, when the prophecy was spoken and he talked about Emmanuel, God with us, it was so God could be with you through it all. There's, there's no reason to feel lonely, anxiety, stress. You're supposed to have joy. You're supposed to have power. You're supposed to have love. You're supposed to be rejoicing because God is with you in every season of your life. And, when, and sometimes when we look at the world, it's, it, it made it about something totally, totally different. The title of my, nef my message is Good News, Good God, God with us. Amen? We serve a, we, it's good news. It's about a good God. And it's about he came to live, he came to live with us. He came to be in us and live with us. Amen. So, you know, I really want to take you to the scripture. I'm going to start it a little different today. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to, to Matthew chapter 1. And I want you to, we're going to read the scripture together. Um, and then I'm, we're going to go through it and kind of break it down. Because I really want to bring out the meaning and the purpose of, of what Christmas is. So this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her pub to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Good news. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. This is what the prophet said. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Good news. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded, commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. Okay? So, what is, is isn't that good news? That Jesus is coming. I mean, you know, Jesus means to save his people. Emmanuel means God with us. So, let me just start off like this. Have you ever been in a situation where you needed God to really show up? You ever been in a place where, like, man, if God doesn't show up, we're done, you know? Or, or man, if he doesn't show up right now, I'm, I'm dead, you know, whatever. So, you know, that's, that's the, the theme that I really want you to see is that God is with us. So I'm going to just give a little incident that happened with us. You know, me and my wife, we like to hike. We like to walk. And uh, 
when we lived in this other house, we had a park that was nearby, and we would go walking. We, and we would love, we loved going through the woods, go through the trails. This park had a trail that went by the bayou, and it was a long trail. We loved walking it. And so uh, on this particular morning, me and my wife went with Adam and Valerie. We all went walking, and, you know, we were having a good time. And like always, Adam partners up with Carmen, and I partner up with Valerie. And so they're about, you know, about 20, 30 foot in front of us, and we, we had been walking a while. We were going through the same trail that we did the day before, you know. And um, so they're going, me and Valerie are talking. All of, her, all of a sudden, I hear some screams, ah, and they're running and screaming. I hear these dogs barking. And then, uh, so I, Valerie looks, and she hears dogs barking, and she had just gotten, she just gotten attacked by a dog probably about two months ago, so she was scared. So when I looked at her, she was like, I ain't going. You go, Dad. I don't know. So I took off running over there, and I see Adam and Valerie, the great the spiritual faith leaders they are. I seen them running. And the dog was chasing them. So I get in, I get in between them, and I started, you know, I, the dog stopped. And then, you know, you know how you do with the dog. You go like this and you try to shoo him off. Every time I went forward, he went forward too. Like, what's up? What? What? I ain't scared. Two pet bulls. It was two pet bulls. And, and, and uh, so every time I went like this, he went like, <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I, he ain't running like I was, thought he was going to run. And, and then I remembered that, uh, like the Lord brought to my remembrance the, the day before we were there walking, I had a, a good, a good stick. I said, man, this is a good stick. So I leaned it up on a tree, and I said, when we come walking again, I'll get that stick. So when that, me and that dog were right here, he was like at the second row. My stick was about where that chair was, and I saw it. And, and then, so I, I took another step, and I grabbed the stick. And, I, and, man, I had that stick, and he was like, start backing up then. He started backing up. And I was like, yeah, 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 that, that better back up. But anyways... <laughs> That was the time in my life where I needed God to really show up. So he gave me a Moses staff. Come on, somebody. He gave me a Moses staff, and he even had the power to shut the mouths of the pit bull, just like he did with Daniel. Come on. He, so, I, I mean, you may not be in a situation where you're going to get bit by a dog, but all of us are in a situation where we really need God to show up. Amen? So this is good news for Christmas that God says that he's going to be with us. Amen. So in this story, we see, I want to just bring out some points in this story because there's a lot of things that have to do with, with, uh, with Christmas that, that we kind of overlook. And, and one of the things that you really, that you got to understand with, with, with God is that, I mean, with, with Jesus is that Jesus is God. That's one of the first points I want to bring out. Jesus is God. You have to come to that realization. Some people think that Jesus was just a prophet, that he was just a philosopher, that he was just a good man, that he was just... No, Jesus is God. Now, there are a lot of names. There are a lot of names that God has, right? Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider, the Prince of Peace. He is the Rose of Sharon. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. But the name that I like the most is Emmanuel, because it sounds more Mexican. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Emmanuel, because it's God with us. Emmanuel sounds like he can make some good tacos. Come on, son. Hey, go to Emmanuel. Emmanuel, man, he, he, he makes some good tacos. But, you know, it's God with us. What, a, what an awesome name. You know, it was an awesome name. Uh, you know, all those other names are great, the great I am, but God with us. That ought to speak to you. That ought to, man, that ought to encourage you for Christmas. That ought to encourage you that when you're, when, when people ask you, what's the meaning of Christmas? It meant that God came to be with us. Amen? And see, that's what Christmas is all about. Christmas is all about that, that God, like I said before, wrapped himself up and came down to earth, and he was the gift to all mankind. Amen? It was, it was God leaving heaven, coming to earth, and being here with you and me, being in us and, and, and teaching us and saving us. Amen? And, and so, you know, I, I, wanna, I want you to get that understanding. And so I also want you to understand, like, all the things that, that Jesus did or that God did just to be with us. You know, there's a sacrifice. How many of you know that there's a sacrifice? You know, sometimes in Christmas... 
We say we got to make a sacrifice. You know, we, I, I really want to buy my baby this gift. My baby, I, that's my baby, and she's been doing good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy my baby this gift, and, and so I'm, I'm going to work a little more overtime. I'm going to stretch a little bit. I'm going to lose a little more sleep because I want to sacrifice. You know, I want to sacrifice. I'm going to sacrifice because of the desire to give the gift. Amen? Well, did you know that the Lord sacrificed? Did you know that there were a lot of people that sacrificed? so that we can be free, so that we can be saved. You know, this is the thing. I mean, if you could just get it, just get it in your mind that Jesus was in heaven, and he put on humanity. He put on flesh. You know, he was in robes of righteousness, robes of, uh, of the heavenlies, and he had to come and put on dirt. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, um, what is that verse? I think I have it up there. Uh, let this let says let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. That's what Jesus did, and and this is another thing. Like if you put yourself, you put yourself in this in this, if you put yourself in this in this position, there's Mary, right? Here's Mary. She. Uh, scholars say that Mary was a, probably between 14 to 16 years old when she was presented to have God's baby. Come on, somebody. You know, Angel showed up. You're going to have God's baby? Yeah, I'm going to have his baby. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. They didn't say it like that. <laughs> but the angel showed up, and he's talking to Mary. Mary's a wise young girl, pure in heart. And he tells Mary... Behold, you know, favored one. You know, the Lord has chosen you to, you know, to, to bear his child. You will conceive by the Holy Spirit. And Mary was just taking all this in, like, really? I mean, can you imagine? 14, 15 years old? What? And, and so she had a very, very simple question, which I can, we can all agree with. She told the angel of the Lord, how can this be? Since I don't know a man. How can this be? And this is what the, this is what the angel of the Lord told her. It will happen by the power of the Holy Spirit. How will this be? How is this going to happen? By the power of the Holy Spirit. This is, and this is the thing. 2,000 years ago, every time God comes to us and gives us something that may seem impossible, the answer is still the same. Lord, how is my son going to come back home? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, how is my marriage going to be restored? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, how am I going to get healed? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Whatever it is that you may be going through, I want you to remember, I want you to understand. God does it. The power of the Holy Spirit. That's what, that's why he came to be with us. Amen? Amen. You see, we have the, the spirit of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost living on the inside of us. So when things seem impossible, you tap into the spirit man. You begin to speak with the spirit man. You begin to believe with your spirit man. Look, your flesh and your soul, it's hard for them to believe. But your spirit man, your spirit man says, we can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. Your spirit man says, said, all things are possible to those who believe. The spirit man believes in the word. It remembers the word. So, back to the story over here. I got a little excited. But... Here's, here's, this, here's this young girl, Mary, right? So Mary says, how can this be? How can this be? I don't even know a man. And she, he says, well, the power of the Holy Spirit. She goes, oh, okay. You know, she's 14, 15. Oh, okay. I'll just tell my fiance that because they're going to ask me, right? So she meets up with Joseph. Joseph's an older guy. You know, he's, he knows the law and stuff. They go meet up at Taqueria Arandas, get some chips and salsa. She's all happily and bubbly. He's sitting there. He sees a little bulge in her, a bulge in her stomach already, and he's like, you, you need to tell me something? Absolutely. I, I got some great news. What? I'm pregnant. <laughs> so he's thinking, I can see that. By who? By the Lord. <laughs> By the Lord. And, you know, if he's, if he's at the taqueria right here off of everything, he said, well, the Lord better take care of you. The Lord better, you better get the Lord's last name. You better let the Lord pay your bills. But thank God he wasn't from Northside. He was from Nazareth. Come on, somebody. See, 
this is, this is just another side note. It's just God is so awesome, right? So go back to that scripture, Matthew 18, that, uh, yeah, so uh, verse 19. Uh, verse 19, he says, because Joseph, her husband, was a, well, he was faithful to the law, yet did not want to expose her publicly. So this is the thing. If, if a woman was betrothed to a man and she came up pregnant but she had an affair with somebody, if he were to turn her in, she would be stoned to death. Here's a 15-year-old girl. So this is, this is awesome. God chooses the girl, but he also chooses Joseph. Even though Joseph was faithful to the law, he was a man of grace. Because even though, even though he saw it, he didn't believe her at first. She was pregnant. He still minded in his heart to follow grace over law. And he says, I don't want her to be stoned. I don't want her to die. I mean, she made a mistake. She's a young girl. And he just, you know, he chose for his son, a stepfather that was a man full of grace. Jesus came in grace and truth. So he was looking for grace people. Even today, he's looking for grace people. Come on, somebody. He's looking for people that, you know, I know that people break the law. I know that they broke, your kids have broken the rules. I know your spouse has hurt you. But he's looking for me and you to be full of truth and grace. Joseph was a man of grace. So, Back to the story. I get veered off every now and then. Back to the story. So Joseph, you know, he's like, so the Lord, the Lord, you're having the Lord's baby. Yep. The son of God. I'm going to have the son of God. And she's happy. She's bubbly. But he just can't get it. Okay. All right. Go. Just go ahead and go home. I'm going to go home. He went home and the Bible says that the Lord gave him what the, in his dream, an angel of the Lord came to him and said, don't be afraid. Mary's telling you the truth. She's, she's con conceived through the Holy Spirit, and she's going to bring forth the Son. And the Son, he's going to forgive all of, all of Israel their sins. He's going to be the Savior of the world. Now, sometimes, like I said, if you're from Northside, it's kind of hard to take that in. Okay, okay. I need three more angels, Lord. That, that ain't going to do it. I don't know if that was Satan or that was God. You know, some people, this man, this man had a relationship with the Lord because most of them be like, I don't know if that was from the Lord or that was from the devil. Because, you know, when I see her, I just want to hit her. I just want to, you know, just you have to put up with a year of, yeah, I don't even know whose baby that is. Every time everything's good, and then you have bad, bad days. I don't even know whose baby that is. You said it was the Lord's. You know, you, you have to go through that over and over and over. You don't have to go through that. He, did, he was a man of God. So this is the thing. With, this is the thing. Remember when he said he was faithful to the law. So if you were a Jew, he was a, he was a man brought up in the Jew. I'm sure he knew the Torah. He knew all that from a young age. So the thing, with, the thing with Joseph is that he knew the word. He knew the word. He remembered over in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. He remembered what it said there. You can put it up on the screen. Put it up on the screen. He said, for unto us a child is born. This is Isaiah. This was hundreds of years before this happened. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called. There go some more names. Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. If you ever question if it, Jesus is God, it says it right there. Mighty God. <laughs> Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Of peace. So when, when Joseph got the visitation from the angel of the Lord, he says, could it be that God is using me to father the Messiah? He also remembered Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel. I, I'm going to call him Emmanuel because it sounds, it sounds better. <laughs> God with us. So Joseph knew the word. Now, let me just tell you how powerful Christmas is, how intimate. Christmas is not about a Christmas tree and lights and gifts. and All that is great. I enjoy Christmas. I love Christmas. I really do. But the Christmas, it brought the fulfillment of the word. Right? So this man believed the word that was written probably 3,000 
years ago. And then the word came to Mary. She had to believe it to bring forth the baby. And then he gave the word to Joseph. Joseph had to believe it to take care of her. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the fulfillment of, I'm going to tell you something. If God has spoken a word over your life, hang on to that word. I don't care how old it is because it will come to pass. If God said it, then he'll bring it to pass. Isaiah 55, 11 says, so shall, my, so shall be my word that comes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the thing for which I sent it. And it shall prosper. It shall prosper for the purpose in which I please. Hang on to God's word. Some of you got a word when Miss Audrey Mack was here. Hang on to that word. Some of you, uh, they've been prophesied over you when you were smaller. How many people I've talked to that they, they, they got away from the Lord, they, they were young, and when they were young, some of them grew up in the church, and, and there was a word spoken to them, and, and it wasn't two years later that they, they, they get saved, and they said, I remember what the Lord told me when I was seven years old. This is not uncommon in the Bible. It's common. God's word never returns void. God's seed never dies. I told you about the seeds that were found in the mummy, found in the mummy that they, that they dug up or whatever. The seed was probably 4,000 years old. They planted it, it grew. The seed doesn't die. The word doesn't die. That ought to tell you right here, you know, everything in the Bible, the Bible has validity. Why? Because everything it prophesied came to pass. There's still some prophecies that haven't come to pass, but I'm telling you today, Christmas was about a prophecy that was fulfilled. Amen? Christmas was about a promise that was fulfilled. I'll tell you what, I don't see Christmas the same anymore. Not after I've learned the things that God went through just to be with me. Amen? So just think about this for a minute. You put yourself in there. Here's Mary. They had that conversation. So Joseph, you know, takes her. And you think about the time that they made the journey. You know, my wife, we've had four children. We've had four children, and I know the way my wife is when she's nine months pregnant. I know she doesn't want to hit any bumps in the road. And when they made the trip, they made a trip on a donkey. Come on, somebody. Nine months pregnant on a donkey. Amen. You know, when I did the research, it was about 75 miles, which took about four days on a donkey for a pregnant woman. I felt bad for Joseph. He was the one pulling the donkey. He probably stopped and like, hey, you think I can get on the back a little bit? She looked at him like, man, I, man, I will slap you crazy. Keep, 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 keep moving. Talking about it. They ain't no, we ain't, I ain't even got a saddle. How you going to talk about Keep walking. I'm pregnant. And try not to hit them bumps, boy. Yes, ma'am. Watch them potholes. That's what my wife used to tell me. She used to get mad when the, we used to be in that big LTD. Now you hit them potholes. She goes, she, I said, I can't help it, man. Houston needs to fix the potholes. It ain't my fault. She get mad. And, uh, but, I mean, they didn't have a suspension like we did. I mean, donkey was better than a horse, you know. But can you imagine, you know, the father of all creation entrusted his son to a 15-year-old girl, to a man that wasn't even married to her, had them go on a journey to Egypt. And then when they went, when she was close to giving birth, she's knocking on doors. They're knocking on the end. They're knocking and they're knocking. This is, this is Jesus. He came to save us. And people open the door and they say, I'm sorry, we're full. I'm sorry, we don't have no room for you. I'm sorry. You know, this is, what happened. This is what's happening right now. People want to take Christ out of Christmas. You can't have Christmas without Christ. You, can have, you cannot have Christmas without Jesus. And they're trying to lock Jesus out. They're trying to say, okay, you know, in certain stores, you know, we, we, want, we want the revenue that Christmas creates, but we don't want Jesus to come with it. You know, we want you to come to work, and we want, you know, all the things that Christmas brings, but we don't, we, you just say happy holidays. You can't take Jesus out of Christmas and it still be Christmas. What do they call the tree? Holiday tree? No, it's still a Christmas tree. Amen? So I'm just, you know, it just, it just blows me away. It blows me away the way the things that, that God did, the journey that he did. You know, any time in his journey, he could have changed his mind. He could have said, you know what, this is too much. This is too hard. I don't want to go through this. I'm, I'm, 
I belong in heaven. I was there in the beginning when it was all created. He could have gave up on us. He could have turned around, but he didn't. Why? Because he wanted to be with us. God with us. He knew, he knew it. He, he, he wanted it. He desired it. And, and, that's, and that's the thing that I really want you to, I want you to get, you know, because we, we can't forget. We can't forget that. There was a lady that she had a newborn baby, and she was so excited. The baby was going to turn one. She hadn't had people over, maybe because of COVID. I don't know. It was just a story. But uh, she, they all came over. She had a lot of, you know, food and snacks and and everybody came over. They were so happy. They were having a good time. Well, the party, they were, they had a whole, the whole party was about to end. And so they were about to leave. They said, oh, we're going to leave, but where's the baby? He goes, oh, the baby's over here in the crib. So you went to the crib, and the baby wasn't there. She began to look, and then she remembered. She goes, oh, I forgot. I dropped the baby off at my mom's. So here they were having a party, but the person they were celebrating was nowhere around. And that's the way we do Christmas. We have the big party. We have the gifts. I mean, I've been to, not, not, not recently, but I've been to, you know, Christmas gatherings where, you know, somebody opens a gift, the other person opens a gift. That's it? That's all I got? <laughs> Man. <laughs> I, I've, I've heard some other stories where people say, let's go in there and see if they got us something first, and then we'll take our presents out. We ain't play this, you know. We ain't gonna. If it's, if it's just ten nine nine ninety nine gift, we're gonna leave it in the trunk. <laughs> I mean, this is. Just, I mean, I've worked with people that had these type of stories. <laughs> Get mean, right? Get hachos. They're just like. There's no. There's no heart in it. There's. They forgot that it's better to give. Than to receive. Let me tell you something. The Father gave us a gift that would fulfill you for a lifetime. Not only, will, not only will the gift that he gave us fulfill us for a lifetime, but it will sustain us and we can give it to others. Every person you come in contact with, to be able to just minister to them about Jesus, the gift of life, Emmanuel, God with us. What is the meaning of Christmas that God came to the earth, to live inside of you, to love you, to give you joy, to give you peace. Everything that is associated with Christmas in the world is stress, anxiety, and all this. Well, it's the opposite. Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. He came to give, he came to make you rejoice. He came to heal you, came to deliver you. That's what the meaning of Christmas is all about. Amen? So when we look at this, and, and I, I look at how the, the sacrifice, and, and that's what I was talking about, some of the sacrifice. I, in, Luke, in Luke chapter 135, when, when the angel of the Lord uh, visited Mary, you know, can you imagine what she felt and, and, you know, what she was facing? She was facing some ridicule. Amen? I mean, she really took a chance and said, Lord, if you chose me to carry this baby, then you're going to convince everybody else that this is you and not me. I want to tell you something. This whole theme, this whole theme was supernatural. Everything that happened here was supernatural. There was nothing natural about it. And if you were, if you were about to get married, if you met the man of your life, and you know, and um, just say, you know, you were young and you got a visitation from the Lord, and he says, you're going to get pregnant. I know after I get married. No, you didn't get pregnant now. Would you be willing to risk it all? Because she knew that this man wasn't going to accept her. And then when she met with him, she's like, Lord, what do I do? Can you imagine her going home? Maybe in tears. Maybe she was crying because he was like, you're crazy. You're crazy, and I'm going to put you away. What you're doing, I, you're lying. Mary, just tell the truth. It was the Lord. Mary, I'm giving you an opportunity to be honest. It was the Lord. Look, this is the last time, okay? Yep, yep. I'm going to give you one more time, and then I'll forgive you. One more time. It was the Lord. What do you want me to say? It was the Lord. You don't believe me. <laughs> she was probably a little Latino. You don't believe me. You know, they get a little mad at 
If you don't believe a Latina, she gets mad after a while. She starts getting mad, like blaming you. Okay, I, I, hold on. Her name was Maria, Mary. You never know. She probably said, man, forget you then. I'm leaving. She probably just picked up her stuff and took off. She probably, forget you then. Do whatever you want to do. But she was bold. She was bold. Amen? We have to be bold because let me tell you, there's a, it's a sacrifice. Amen? I said it's a sacrifice. And, you know, I want us to understand that gift, Jesus. You know, this is a, uh, Jesus, it was a gift to mankind. He was a gift from the Father. So let's go back to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. I want to show you this. So it says, for unto us a child is born. That was humanity's gift. Unto us a son was given. That was the son of God given to us. Unto us a child is born on the earth. He was fully man. Unto us a son was given, fully God. Jesus was fully man, and he was fully God. He was still God's son when he came. He was still God. Amen? He was still God fully. But he had to become a man to be enabled to redeem us. Amen. This is, this is so next to my heart, you know. It says, and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. When I think about Jesus, I think about, I don't know, when I was just studying for this, it just made me think about uh, Jesus as our knight in shining armor. And he's coming to rescue his bride that's trapped in a castle that is guarded by a dragon. I know you're thinking about Shrek. I'm not talking about Shrek. <laughs> We're not talking about Fiona and Lord Farquaad. We're not talking about them right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm talking about Jesus being our knight in shining armor, the dragon being Satan, and the woman being the bride of Christ. And God is saying, I want to win my bride. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Beautiful it's a beautiful bride. He's coming back. He's coming back for us. But he came and he says, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. He, he came and put his spirit on the inside of us so that we can have life and life more abundantly. You know, God has a, God has a mission. And his mission is you. His mission is me. That's, that's God's mission. God's whole mission was us. Amen? Uh, and, and this is a little thing that I had wrote down, a little thing that I wrote down because, you know, there, every one of us, they go, we go through those times and those troubles in our lives to where it has to be something supernatural to get us out. I think about the Old Testament and how there was the lion dens, the lion dens of, of Daniel's life and and there was the fiery furnaces, and then there was the giants that David faced. God knew that there were going to be giants in your life. God knew there was going to be giants in my life. But we weren't going to have to face them alone. You know, even when, when, when the pet bulls roll up on you, he's still shutting mouths of animals so they won't bite you and eat you. Amen? I mean, I'm telling you today, right here in Houston, Texas, God is still doing great things because he came to be with us. You can witness to somebody, and they, came, they may be trapped in the bondage of drugs and alcohol. They may be beat down by life, but you can come, and you can give them Emmanuel, God with us, and they can resurrect their life. This room is full of people that was busted and broken and that was hurting, that there was no hope. They were lost, and God came in and whispered, I'm with you. Emmanuel, I'm with you. New life. New life. You're looking at a preacher that was an ex-convict. You're looking at a preacher that a lot of bad things happened in my life. But I'm here today. I'm here today with the spirit of the most high God. I'm here today with a new life. I'm here today redeemed. I'm here today preaching the gospel. I'm here giving out what God gave to me. I'm here today grabbing hold of what grabbed hold of me. I'm here today saying, not, not that I have arrived, but one thing I do is forgetting those things which are behind and pressing forward to those things which are ahead. Amen? That's what I want you to understand, that you're, you're never, ever alone. Um, 
this is the thing. The gift was God himself. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit resides in each one of the, the Trinity. So Jesus was not a lower, a lower in the Trinity. Holy Spirit wasn't lower in the Trinity. They're all equal. So the Holy Spirit, when Jesus says, I am, I'm going, I'm going so that I can send the other helper, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And because you have the Holy Spirit in you, you can do all things. It's better for the Holy Spirit to be in us. You see, Jesus, Jesus was only subject to, you have to come, when Jesus was on the earth, you had to come to him. People had to come to him. When they come to him, they, 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 he gave them a word. You know, when he, once he gave them a word, it didn't matter where they were, he could give the word. But we were, it was, it was, uh, it was dependent on it if you could get to Jesus. But when we got the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can go anywhere and everywhere at any time. You could be watching, you could be watching by live stream, and the Holy Spirit can just come and, and wreck your life right now. Though so you may be looking and you may be struggling, you may be worried about how you're gonna do this, how you're gonna pay your bills, and the Holy Spirit can just go through there and, and just blow your mind right now. That's why I said it's better. He says, Greater works shall you see, because I go to the Father. And I send you the Holy Spirit. John 16, 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him. Amen? I'm going to close with this, this idea. So, you know, in the beginning with Adam and Eve. You know, Adam and Eve, they were both in the, they were both at the tree. They both bit the fruit, and, you know, they sinned against God. But let, let's just say, let's just say hypothetically that, that Eve went to the tree by herself and her husband was on the other side of the garden. And let's just say that Eve bit the apple and she died spiritually. So imagine that God having to go to Adam and say, hey, son, I got to talk to you. You know that woman I gave you? Your wife. Well, you know that tree I told you not to eat from? Well, she bit of that apple and, and she died. I think about that conversation, but I think about that conversation happening in heaven. That the father going to Jesus and he said, son, you know that bride I prepared for you on the earth? He said, yes. He said, well, she's died. She sinned. She sinned and she's going to die. And Jesus looks and he says, I'll die for her. I'll die. I don't want her to die. I'll die for her. He says, son, you don't understand. They're going to reject you. They're going to spit on you. They're going to hurt you really bad. They're going to shame you. They're going to hang you on a cross. He said, I'll go anyway because I want to be with him. He left heaven to be with us so that we can leave earth to be with him. Christmas was about him coming to be with you and me. It was about him coming to save us. Don't ever take it for granted what Christmas is about. It wasn't easy for Jesus to be born as a baby, born in a manger. You know, when he talked about swaddling cloths, those were pieces of rag. Those were not like a, a, whole, a whole blanket. Those swaddling cloths were pieces of rag that they wrapped him up. It was cold. There were more animals at his birth than there were humans. He humbled himself. He became human. So that he could be with you and me. I want to tell you today, but not sorrow, but with joy. I want to tell you, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Amen. You serve a God that loves you. You serve a God that went through literally hell to save you, to marry you, to call you his bride, 
to become one with you, to never leave you nor forsake you. That's good news. If he came to be with us, then he will never leave us. Amen? Today, I want you to stand to your feet. And I want you to just remember. Remember him. Remember that baby in a manger that, that at 33 years old, he picked up that cross and took it. He said, for the joy that was set before him. For the joy that was set before him, he, he got spit on. He got shamed. He got beaten. 